Everybody is identical in their secret, unspoken belief that way down deep, they are different from everyone else. I do things like get in a taxi and say, the library, and step on it. The truth will set you free, but not until it's finished with you. The really important kind of freedom involves attention and awareness and discipline and effort and being able to truly care about other people and to sacrifice for them over and over in myriad petty, little, unsexy ways every day. You will become way less concerned with what other people think of you when you realize how seldom they do. The so-called psychotically depressed person who tries to kill herself doesn't do so out of quote hopelessness or any abstract convention that life's assets and debits do not square and surely not because death seems suddenly appealing. The person in whom its invisible agony reaches a certain unendurable level will kill herself the same way a trapped person will eventually jump from the window of a burning high-rise. Make no mistake about people who leap from burning windows. Their terror of falling from a great height is still just as great as it would be for you or me standing speculatively at the same window just checking out the view i.e. the fear of falling remains a constant. The variable here is the other terror, the fire's flames. When the flames get close enough, falling to death becomes the slightly less terrible of two terrors. It's not desiring the fall, it's terror of the flames. And yet nobody down on the sidewalk looking up and yelling, don't and hang on, can understand the jump. Not really. You'd have to have personally been trapped and felt flames to really understand a terror way beyond falling. Fiction is one of the few experiences where loneliness can be both confronted and relieved. Drugs, Movies where stuff blows up, loud parties, all these chase away loneliness. By making me forget my name's Dave, and I live in a one-by-one -one box of bone no other party can penetrate or know. Fiction, poetry, music, really deep, serious sex, and in various ways, religion. These are the places, for me, where loneliness is countenanced, stared down, transfigured, treated. What do you get when you cross an insomniac, an unwilling agnostic, and a dyslexic? Give up? You get someone who stays up all night torturing himself mentally over the question of whether or not there's a dog. If you are bored and disgusted by politics and don't bother to vote, you are in effect voting for the entrenched establishments of the two major parties, who please rest assured are not dumb, and who are keenly aware that it is in their interest to keep you disgusted and bored, and cynical, and to give you every possible reason to stay at home doing one-hitters and watching MTV on primary day. By all means, stay home if you want, but don't bullshit yourself that you're not voting. In reality, there is no such thing as not voting. Either you vote by voting, or you vote by staying home, and tactically doubling the value of someone's diehard vote.
because here's something else that's weird, but true. In the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as atheism. There is no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship, be it JC or Allah or Yahweh or the Wiccan Mother Goddess or the Four Noble Truths or some inviolable set of ethical principles, is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never have enough, never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure and you will always feel ugly. And when time and age start showing, you will die a million deaths before they finally grieve you. On one level, we all know this stuff already. It's been codified as myths, proverbs, cliches, epigrams, parables. The skeleton of every great story. The whole trick is keeping the truth up front in daily consciousness. Everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. How odd I can have all this inside me, and to you, it's just words. It's weird to feel like you miss someone you're not even sure you know. Try to learn to let what is unfair teach you. What passes for hip, cynical transcendence of sentiment is really some kind of fear of being really human, since to be really human is probably to be unavoidably sentimental and naive and goo-prone and generally pathetic. We're all lonely for something we don't know we're lonely for. How else to explain the curious feeling that goes around feeling like missing somebody we've never even met? The parts of me that used to think I was different or smarter or whatever almost made me die. It did what all ads are supposed to do. Create an anxiety relievable by purchase. Fictions about what it is to be a fucking human being. Am I a good person? Deep down, do I even really want to be a good person? Or do I only want to seem like a good person so that people, including myself, will approve of me? Is there a difference? How do I actually know whether I'm bullshitting myself, morally speaking? Lonely people tend, rather, to be lonely because they decline to bear the psychic costs of being around other humans. They are allergic to people. People affect them too strongly. Acceptance is usually more a matter of fatigue than anything else. Whatever you get paid attention for is never what you think is most important about yourself. There are these two young fish swimming along and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way who nods at them and says, Morning boys. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, What the hell is water? The next suitable person you're in light conversation with 
you stop suddenly in the middle of the conversation and look at the person closely and say, what's wrong? You say it in a concerned way. He'll say, what do you mean? You say, something's wrong, I can tell. What is it? And he'll look stunned and say, how did you know? He doesn't realize something's always wrong with everybody, often more than one thing. He doesn't know everybody's always going around all the time with something wrong and believing that they're exerting great willpower and control to keep other people for whom they think nothing's ever going wrong from seeing it. What the really great artists do is they're entirely themselves. They're entirely themselves. They've got their own vision. They have their own way of fracturing reality. And if it's authentic and true, you will feel it in your nerve endings. That sometimes human beings have to just sit in one place and like hurt. That there is such a thing as raw, unalloyed, agendaless kindness. That it is possible to fall asleep during an anxiety attack. That concentrating on anything is very hard work. I had kind of a midlife crisis at 20, which probably doesn't argue well for my longevity. You burn with hunger for a food that does not exist. Everything takes time. Bees have to move very fast to stay still. Learning how to think really means learning how to exercise some control over how and what you think. It means being conscious and aware enough to choose what you pay attention to and to choose how you construct meaning from experience. Because if you cannot or will not exercise this kind of choice in adult life, you will be totally hosed. Almost nothing important that ever happens to you happens because you engineer it. Destiny has no beeper. Destiny always leans trench-coated out of an alley with some sort of psst that you usually can't even hear because you're in such a rush to or from something important you've tried to engineer. To be, in a word, unborable is the key to modern life. If you are immune to boredom, there is literally nothing you cannot accomplish. The truth is, you already know what it's like. You already know the difference between the size and the speed of everything that flashes through you. And the tiny inadequate bit of it you could never let anyone else know. As though inside you is the enormous room full of what seems like everything in the whole universe at one time or another. And yet the only parts that get out have to somehow squeeze out through one of those tiny keyholes you see under the knob in older doors, as if we're all trying to see each other through these tiny keyholes. But it does have a knob. The door can open, but not in the way you think. The truth is, you've already heard this, that this is what it's like that it's what makes room for the universe inside you. All the endless, inbent fractals of connection and symphonies of different voices, the infinities you could never show another soul. And you think it makes you a fraud, the tiny fraction anyone else ever sees? Of course you're a fraud. Of course what people see is never you. And of course, you know this, and of course you try to manage what part they see if you know it's only a part, 
Who wouldn't? It's called free will, Sherlock. But at the same time, it's why it feels so good to break down and cry in front of others. Or to laugh. Or speak in tongues. Or chant in Bengali. It's not English anymore. It's not getting squeezed through any hole. So cry all you want. I won't tell anybody. You can be shaped or you can be broken. There is not much in between. Try to learn. Be coachable. Try to learn from everybody, especially those who fail. This is hard. How promising you are as a student of the game is a function of what you can pay attention to without running away. If you can think of times in your life that you've treated people with extraordinary decency and love and pure, uninterested concern, just because they were valuable as human beings, the ability to do that with ourselves, to treat ourselves the way we would treat a really good, precious friend or a tiny child of ours that we absolutely loved more than life itself. And I think it's probably possible to achieve that. I think part of the job we're here for is to learn how to do it. <laughs>